Good evening, guys. Good evening, everyone. Namaste. So I'm really uh, happy to meet you here, and I welcome you all to ROTC Season 3, the Loft Edition. So in this uh, version, we'll be talking about the entire design brief of Loft, and uh, you know what went behind it, and uh, how are you know how you all contributed in making the design better. So before I go into uh, I jump into the today's presentation, I'll just give you a broad outline on uh, what is it that we're going to talk. So we have broadly broken down the presentation into five chapters. So chapter one is about uh, the arrival experience, making an impression, right? So that's chapter one. Chapter two is about uh, the new phenomenon, working from home, right? And chapter three is about childcare. Chapter four is about uh, healthcare, and uh, you know, health and uh, fitness related uh, facilities. And chapter five is about practical luxury. Uh, after that, we will uh, probably, you know, I'll just give a uh, brief, uh, uh, you know, some, we got some video presentations, and then we'll uh, head into a Q&A, an interactive Q&A where you can ask questions and uh, I'll be there to answer. So yeah, let's get started with today's uh, presentation and I'm really excited to do this with all you guys. So before we start, I'll just give a broad outline about uh, Loft, which I, uh, so Loft is spread in 4.92 acres. It's an exclusive uh, 3 BHK community, and uh, it's uh, ground plus 45 floors. And some of the key elements of Loft is, I would say, some of the top, I mean, there are several things, but the top three, th three things I would say is the work from home related facilities and our very best seller, the outdoor living uh, balconies and the urban corridor, something which we introduced new in Project Loft. Right, so see the, the, then let's head straight into chapter one. The most important thing of any project, right, any community is the first impression, the impression it makes on its residents, and more importantly, the guests who are visiting them. So the, you know, the impression matters a lot. So a new home should be more than just a place to live. It should make a lasting impression on everyone. So, and that's a testament about the property, right? So, so, in, with regarding to this aspect, so I'll, I'll probably discuss on uh, two, two key topics. What is it that we did at a community scale, right, uh, regarding uh, uh, the superior arrival experience, and what is it that we, did, that we did at a apartment scale, or what we call family scale, right? So first, let me talk about the community scale uh, design improvisations, what we have done in Loft, which can have a lasting impression on its, uh, uh, on its guests and its residents. Right, the first most important thing is the grand entrance, right? So as people enter, that's what leaves an impression. So we did survey about various projects, various, especially we observed a lot of five-star hotels, what happens in them, because there is a certain element of wow which it creates when one, ex one enters these properties or facilities. So one thing common across all of them we found was that most of the star hotels have a water body at the entrance with cascading waterfalls, so that there's sound of water which one can hear right when they're entering into the property, right? And we all know sound of water as a sort of a cooling and calming effect on, you know, uh, on anybody and, and more so it's visually appealing. So in the entrance of Loft as well, so we, we planned for a big uh, water ca cascade right upon the entrance. And again, there's a roundabout where guests can get dropped and there'll be a sculptor, uh, sculpture in between around the roundabout, so it'll really give them a very luxury and a very plush experience as they're entering into the property, right? So you can see on your screen, uh, you know, the particular, uh, uh, I would say, the 2D diagram of uh, how we have designed that. So this is how it's going to look. So, you know, uh, this is a 3D image of how that particular thing is going to look. So, so it'll really thrill the guests and the residents as they enter into the property. So this was one very key aspect what we focused right from the word go while designing loft. Right, the next important thing what we realized was the entire aspect around lobbies, right? Again, when you look at uh, five-star hotels and all, they have massive, very plush, luxurious lobbies. So we really wanted to take the notch above in this, uh, in this project. So we segregated the lobbies into two aspects again, the guest lobbies and the resident lobbies. Right, the guest lobbies is exclusively used by the guests right when they enter the property and uh, you know, that's their first, uh, you know, first touch and feel of the, 
uh, of the project. That is where they would be received by the, you know, uh, by the host there. So, so that was one very key thing. And second aspect was the resident lobby. Because again, residents too use the property on a day-to-day -day basis, right, uh, while using the podium or, you know, any time. So both of these we focused. And unlike other projects where for both purposes you have one lobby, we thought that that, that was not right. So that was, that's not going to leave a lasting impression. So we dedicatedly have separate lobbies for guests and separate lobby for uh, residents so that you know, we can really create a top-notch uh, experience. So this is a, you know, a sample uh, image of the design of the guest lobby. Again, this is a double light lobby. So it's made with plush Italian marbles, and, uh, you know, we, and we intend to have a sort of a, a very five-star hotel-like uh, arrival experience, where there'd be bouquets and that sort of thing, and fragrance of the flowers. So the guest would be really thrilled once they, you know, once they enter, into the, enter into the project. And the, so this is an image of the, the clubhouse uh, lobby right outside the, uh, I would say, the multipurpose hall. Again, that's, that's another space where a lot of guests would be coming in. So we really had to you know, do thesis uh, research on, okay, what are all the guest-focused areas, where is our, which are all the locations where there would be a lot of guest traffic, and really focus on that. So this is the clubhouse, uh, uh, clubhouse reception lobby, so where guests would be treated to, again, uh, large open uh, lobby with multiple, you know, a very plush uh, look and feel. So this is one, uh, this is one of the uh, resident lobby. So there are almost uh, uh, two resident lobbies per tower. So then there are two towers. So there are four resident lobbies in the ground floor. All of them are double light, again with uh, plush materials like uh, marbles and uh, plush furniture. So just so that, you know, guests can have a, residents can have a superior experience right, when, they, when they're interacting with the podium-related amenities and all. So this was uh, one major aspect, right? And then came the lift lobbies. So this is, again, one area where a lot of people congregate and uh, I would say, you know, use these uh, facilities. So again, see, if you actually look at all the imagery and the design aspect, right, a lot of this was inspired from the five-star hotels, right? And uh, so that was the design brief what we have given. And even in our research, when we asked our uh, customers, OK, what's, wh you know, can you list some of the important features which a modern day community should have? Uh, lobbies were one of the most important thing. And a lot of people did ask about the guest experience. So we combined all of this into what we call arrival experience. And we thought it should leave a lasting impression on both its guests and the residents. So that leaves, you know, a, it will give a sense of, uh, I would say, a sense of luxury when one walks into it. So this is what we did at a community scale, right? So that was a, a arrival, the arrival plaza, the guest lobby, and then the resident lobby. Now let me talk about some of the, you know, uh, some of the, the sim same things what we have done at a family level, that is at an apartment level. So let me share an interesting infographic uh, with you. So when we did, again, uh, uh, survey from our customers, we asked them which of these is a mark of luxury within your apartment. So now we are, we are moving towards the arrival experience within your flat, right? So you see a whooping 45% uh, told uh, bigger size of living room is very, very important. It's a mark of luxury. And more floor to ceiling height, 42% have mentioned that as a mark of luxury. So combined close to a whooping 87% I've told that was lux uh, luxury for us is the entire living room experience, right? The entire, I would say, the materials used there, the sizes, the heights, this is what is luxury, right? So we picked up from that, and then we went detailed into it. Then we asked them one more question, like which room, according to you, is the most important amongst the following, right? We have mentioned bedrooms and all. Again, a whooping 56% have mentioned the living room. So you can see, undoubtedly, the living room stands out as the most important aspect of our, uh, of our family life, of our uh, apartment, right? So, so what did we do with respect to the living room? So just one second, I'm getting my uh, thing in order. Yes, it's working. Great. So we have, we have so all these inputs have uh, you know prompted us to design the largest uh, living room in its class. We have a 16 feet by close to 12 feet size living room. 
so you know uh, where people can you know put any size of furniture and really take up the space we have even uh, you know uh, uh, went in further details and you know if you look at the living room design there is a right when you open the door at the you know at the corner there is a feature wall this was again very interesting uh, aspect of it when we spoke with our customers and then with a uh, few interior designers in the modern day in the current generation of interior design the feature wall is coming out as a very important aspect of it it is a stand out wall where you're going to put your painting a well lit wall or you know any 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 art or deco which is very personal to the family so this has got a very right when you open the door you see straight ahead there's a very big feature wall and you could decorate it in however you you could you could personalize it the way you want thereby bringing in the flavor to your apartment so we have developed the biggest uh living room in its class and i would like to even mention about the height see again height also was something uh, which people were mentioned uh, which people mentioned in the surveys right uh, close to 42% said height of the flat is a sign of its luxury so in loft we went uh, we you know we are designing the see typically most of the projects have uh, around 3 meter slab to slab height that is gross height right 3 meter slab to slab in loft we are giving 3.15 meter that's close to 4 and a half inches more uh, more height in the apartment so that will greatly add to the grandeur of the space and make you feel much more uh, much better much much more luxury right and uh, we are even giving we are even giving one of the uh, uh, best in class uh, doors so we are going for 8 feet height 8 uh, feet height doors and at the 8 feet height is net height so the height of the door would be 8 feet tall and all internal doors also also would be the same one if uh, I, i just need to clarify on that but the main main door is a 8 feet tall 8 uh, feet height one So that's how we have designed your uh, living room, where we have one we are focused on the size of it. Next, we are focused on uh, some of the features of it, like the feature wall, and then even the height of your entire apartment, so that you get a very uh, vibrant and a very luxury feel right when you're living into your house, right? So this is some of the imagery of uh, of your living room. I think one second. I think there's some. yeah working so you can see this is the image of your of your living room so it's and you you see the wall with the you know with the mirrors right that's your feature wall that the residents can uh, design it can personalize it and however they want and you know put in their flavor to the house so this is one of the key aspect of uh, of loft so so just to iterate of what i have spoken so we have um, uh, you know we focused on the entire arrival experience part making an impression at a community scale we focused on uh, you know the arrival ex- the entire uh, entrance uh, drive through lobby the entrance lobby and uh, the guest lobby the resident lobbies and the lift lobbies and at a family scale we focused on the the entire living room experience and the flat experience with respect to height the ceiling heights so before i move on to the next chapter i just want to take a poll so yeah we keep taking this poll so that it the session is more interactive and i get a more uh, feedback on what you guys are thinking and you know and it will really help us going forward so i'll be launching the poll and uh, we'll roughly take around 30 to 40 seconds before people uh, poll and then maybe we can discuss the results before we move on so i think the poll is uh, projected on your uh, uh, on your screen so i'll just uh, read it out which of these features are most important uh, are you most impressed with so you can see the options so you can uh, you know select any one of the following we'll take around 30 seconds before we declare the results and maybe i have a small chat on it before we go forward please uh, you know uh, select your answer it will really you know help us in thinking what you help us in knowing what you're thinking maybe around 15 seconds more another 5 seconds for those of you who have not uh, polled please poll 
Three, two, one. Done. Great. I'm ending the poll and uh, let's discuss the results. See, uh, and it'll, you know, see, let me see what you guys are thinking. So can we, team, can we post the poll? Poll results? Okay, so, oh, great. A whooping 50% of you have uh, said the biggest uh, in class, the, the best in class living room is something which you are most impressed with. Okay, great. And 20% uh, with the grand entrance and cascading water body, and double height uh, resident lift and guest lobbies. Great. So I think uh, this gives us a good feedback on you know, what, what, what's your preferences, right? So thank you for that. So now let's head into the chapter number two, right? So, great. So let's head into chapter number two, the new phenomenon of work from home, right? And what is it? So this, how did we address this problem? What solutions did we come up with in uh, Loft? So, you know, work from home is something which is very ubiquitous, very common these days in our lifestyles, right? So I feel like, you know, the entire concept of co-working spaces, is something which is, which is the future which the, the, the concept of hybrid work is here to stay, and how, how, how does the product, how does Loft cater to its residents' needs, right? So what are the solutions we did, uh, we, we, we came up against that. Again, we conducted a lot of the detailed surveys, focus group studies, polls with uh, most of our customers, around 1,500 customers, and they have mentioned various uh, things about this. In fact, they prompted us through these surveys that, we need to come up with a solution regarding work from home because it's, it's something which is very common and something which definitely there is great room to improve from the point of view of communities, right? So we, we, we asked this question to our, uh, our customers, how often do you work from home? And if you see a whooping, close to 87% said they're exposed to work from home in some format or other. You know, people are doing permanent work from home, people are doing, working from home three to four times a week, and some people are doing one to two times a week. There is only a certain small, like 13% of the people now are saying they're not working from home at all. So 87% are working from home. So you can imagine how much of, uh, uh, you know, how common it has become, right? Especially post pandemic, everybody is like working from home in some format or the other. And then that definitely, now we see that suddenly lifestyle has changed. So now what sort of solutions do we come up, uh, come up right? So. Then we went and asked one more question further. So, okay, now that it's quite evident that you guys are working from home, what is it that a co-working space uh, would add value? Like what, you know, how would it add value to you? So, probably, yeah. So this is how we designed the co-working space. Again, one of the key aspects while designing that was accessibility. We wanted it to be very, you know, very convenient, very easily accessible, not tucked away in some corner where, where you know, it's, it takes long time to go or people are not really interested. And we were very, very cognizant about the entire look, feel, and the environment of the space, right? So that, again, and we wanted it to keep as close as possible to some of the best offices so that people are not, uh, you know, uh, people don't get alienated from the, some of the, you know, so the office environment, the, good, the, the feels of the office environment, right? Because sometimes just working from home might get uh, taxing or might get really, uh, you know, uh, really boring. So the, the co we set up close to 5,000 square feet of uh, co-working space right underneath the tower so people can access it just, you know, you can just take your lift and come down and like I would say less than 100 steps you can access the co-working space. And again, we focused on all facilities. Again, this is just not like giving some work desk. No, again, that wouldn't really solve the problem, right? We would want people to really be excited coming here and working than even working from their office. That's the level of aesthetic what, aesthetic and functionality what we wanted to build into it. So first we made a big decent sized space. It's close to 5,000 square feet and it houses close to 50 to 55 workstations and with four dedicated uh, uh, conference rooms which you can uh, book through our uh, resident app as well so that you can seamlessly use, uh, use the space and network with your, uh, uh, with, your, uh, uh, you know, with your community and the other residents there. So that you, you don't feel the boredom of just working in your home, right? Just staying there 24 cross 7. So these are some of the imagery of the work from home stations. Again, we tried to keep it very boho, very, I would say, young and chic. So very informal structure. So people can, it can facilitate for individual style of working. 
a discussion style, a group working, right? Or it can uh, even like, uh, I'll even be showing the meeting rooms so where they can do more, where they can attend the meeting rooms. And, and again, this will have all state of the art uh, printers and furniture requirement because when we did research, uh, you know, how a co working space would add value, close to 30% people said uh, uh, one of the biggest pain points when they're working from home is inaccessibility to office infrastructure, like printers, stationery, and all. So again, that also we had to take care. So, you know, this is some of the, yeah, this was uh, uh, the infographic I was mentioning. A co-working space in your living community would help you when you see 20, or close to 29% say access to resources like meeting rooms and, uh, you know, such, such thing. And a change in, change in scene, being more productive. So see, these are some of the things uh, which we found you know, the, the problems of co-working, uh, problems of work from home. Of course, work from home has terrific advantages, like it saves up in your travel time, right, which is, and it saves, and naturally we are able to spend that time more on our personal uh, things, like spending time with family or any personal errands. So it does give great amount of time. It's, it's a big time saver, but there are some problems with it that, you know, there is no particular differentiation or distinction between work-life, you know, uh, the work-life balance. So people are, people are unable to distinguish, okay, distinguish between, okay, this is my work hours, this is not my work hour. Which, in the case of office, it's easy. When you're in office, you're in the office environment, so that's your work hour. When you're not there, then it's not that. So that's why the change of space is very, very important for the psychological change as well. So that's why we thought that we had to come up with the co-working space. And another great value, how it adds also, you see, post-pandemic, right, especially uh, what we have been seeing, there's a sudden surge for bigger, uh, bigger spaces, requirement for bigger, bigger flow plans, right? Let's say some, somebody who, who wanted to buy 2,000 square feet suddenly is realizing that, okay, I need, uh, I need 300 square feet more because, uh, because I'm working from home, I need to set up my workspace at home. So one by essentially, you, you know, by taking 300 square feet more at, in an area like financial district, one has to pay 30 lakhs more. And second thing, you're working in isolation, which, has, which definitely has, you know, problems like uh, you're working out of the same area, you're not, able, you're not actively networking or interacting with people. It does have its own, uh, I would say, um, uh, uh, mental impacts, right? So that, those are some of the cons of co-working space. So that's where we came up with the idea of, can we, you know, uh, provide a facility which is much better than the offices or closer to some of the best offices out there so that people would really enjoy, uh, you know, they, they get really the gains of working from home in the point of view that, okay, they end up saving their travel time and all of that, and yet don't forego the, you know, and uh, yet don't forego things like networking, things like, you know, boredom of just staying within, within the house and be present in a working environment and then be closer to the entire office infrastructure like meeting rooms, stationery, and et cetera. So that's, that's why I, I feel like, you know, the co-working space has loved, has been designed by taking all these uh, all these inputs into constraint, uh, all these inputs into design. So, and again, our customers themselves have mentioned all these things. So we have taken all these things and implemented these designs. So these are some of the imagery of the meeting rooms. So all these, there are four meeting rooms in Loft. So you guys can, uh, you know, book this meeting room through the resident app and uh, probably use it, right? So it will give you great uh, flexibility. I mean, it will give you a lot of infrastructure. You can do your meetings from there. And even another interesting point also I would like to cite is uh, uh, the concept of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, most of the communities, man, there are a lot of residents who are coming up with their own startups, right? I think if I'm not wrong, that's close to uh, two to three percent of the residents are coming up with their own startups while working, uh, while, while working in their professional gig. So th this sort of space will even help them in, you know, uh, nurturing that startup in its early stage and things like that. So I think this would greatly add, uh, you know, to the productivity and greatly solve the work from home problem for the residents. And yet at the same time, not being uh, working only in one corner of the house, you'll be working amongst people. So the sense of working in office can be retained, right? This is a networking zone, so, you know. And again, even the style of furniture also, you know, we are selecting that, uh, you know, we're coming up in such a way so that it can accommodate multi-styles, right? So individual style, I would say more casual style, networking or a more serious style. So all of that, so that some of these designs will see more improvisations as we go ahead. So, so this concludes the chapter two, where we discussed about uh, the co-working spaces uh, on facility in Project Loft. 
and the thesis behind that. So let me take a poll before I move into the next chapter, right? So how often do you work from home? So I wanted to know, you know, now particularly from the loft residents and uh, you know people who are interested in loft. So does this facility really suit your more, you, you know you, uh, your current lifestyles? So let me launch the. I think uh, we've launched the poll. Great. So close to 75% are now working from home in loft. Wonderful. So. Almost 15% people are doing permanent work from home, so this space would be of great value for them. Uh, and another 23% are doing, so one fourth are doing three to four days, and 37% are doing one to two days a week. And 25% don't work from home, so hopefully this space will convince them to work from home at least once, uh, once a week. So great, so that's what, uh, that, you know, that's, that's the thesis behind what we have done uh, with regarding the co-working spaces in Loft. So now let's move to the next chapter. It's around childcare. What is it that we did uh, about childcare, right? It's, so one of the key aspects is giving the best childhood, right? And as a young parent, I have two kids. The elder one is three years and the younger one is one year old. So I constantly think about them, okay? Well, you know, are they, what time are they going to play? What's up with their uh, crash or what's, what's up with their entire childcare related uh, facilities and everything? So there's something very much on the mind of most of our customers, right? Uh, almost, uh, I would say, close to 40% of our customers are in the 30 to 35 age group, the millennials. So most of them have, I would say, the one to three year uh, age group kids. So we really wanted to you know, solve for that problem, right? Uh, making sure kids have the best facilities, and at the same time, right, uh, the facilities needs to, be, needs to give the convenience to the parents, Right, so that's, that's, that, that was very important for us. So here again, we reached out to our customers. So what, again, this was something which our customers only have mentioned, right? Everything about the importance of having a crash or importance about a childcare facility on, on a gated community. So when we asked them a question, what is, you know, what is a great added feature of a quality crash facility? You see a whooping 40% of them have said indoor outdoor spaces are very important. And something very interesting people have mentioned, 25% have mentioned uh, flexible timings. So this was uh, something very new for us. So when we, you know, again spoke with our customers, especially young mothers, 72% uh, of our customers have both wife and husband working. So they, they mentioned that, you know, so it, by the time they sign off from their work and come, come home, it takes like evening six or seven. So they wanted, you know, the childcare facility on, on site to provide you know, to provide services until seven in the evening so that they can sign off from their work and they can, you know, then they can uh, easily, you know, take care of the child. So that was very key, important, uh, uh, you know, feedback what we got. So then let me, you know, briefly discuss about the design of the crash, a very important feature. Again, the crash is also close to 5,000 square feet of covered space, right? It has got uh, multiple zones. It's got an indoor play zone. Right? And, and by the way, this is the biggest crash uh, in, the, in, the, in the gated community segment. Now, not just in this segment, in the entire gated community segment of Hyderabad, this is the biggest crash and one of its kind. So the indoor place is, again, again the crash is placed right underneath the tower so that it's easily accessible by anybody and somebody can reach in really quick and, you know, uh, and the, another advantage it gave us with, uh, by keeping it on the ground floor is access to the outdoor spaces. You have seen in the poll that close to 40% have, uh, you know, mentioned the acts, you know, indoor outdoor spaces are something very important for a crash. So by keeping in the ground floor, it's very, e ingress and egress is very easy. People can, uh, you know, kids can really, you know, just uh, move around seamlessly. Because, and when we spoke with a, even a crash provider, right, crash service provider, so we took their inputs in designing it. I'll, I'll, I'll share a story like, uh, you know, when my, when my kid was started going to the crash, for the first one month, he used to not go into the classroom. He used to just cry if they go into the classroom for some reason. They used to just, uh, you know, go out in the open and just play. And eventually they got accustomed to the place and that's when they started going in the classroom. So the crash uh, designer have told us that it's very, very important that a crash have direct access to outdoor play space. So that kids can, kids don't, you know, kids are not bogged down suddenly in, by this new environment. 
uh, and like you know they it, it it becomes really difficult for them to uh, you know get adjusted to the space so the crash here is provided right on the ground floor on the podium level and it has got uh, access to the entire outdoor play space as well one it got an indoor play space this is the indoor uh, play space right so and again all of this is part of the crash and we have even taken the deta details of design where the toilets provided for the crash are uh, baby sized toilets so the commodes and all would be baby sizes right so it's easy for them to use and we are even uh, planning to open some of the best uh, crash service providers so that they are able to you know provide a top notch service because to you know probably uh, uh, see how, uh, where we see is like you know and end of the day the cost, it's not just about giving the space we need to give the space and we need a right service provider so it ultimately the consumer consumes the service not the space right so we are in talks with uh, several uh, you know top uh, crash providers to come and operate this uh, so hopefully we will be able to come up with that announcement maybe in a couple of quarters right so yeah coming back to this yeah the crash has uh, an indoor play area and then you see a massive close to if i'm not wrong close to around 12000 square feet of outdoor play area where the you know the kids can just seamlessly move in and move out this will greatly this will greatly make it easy for them to get acclimatized to the crash conditions and if you actually see in the plan right just in the other tower ground floor there's a co-working space so we have really you know the i think that that lad great value because the parents can really come and drop off their kids at the crash and work on the ground same floor in just the in just abutting tower so they have good visibility they can just drop in by see how their child is doing so it will give them a great sense of uh, i would say comfort to know what's happening there and again from the child perspective also there's a good uh, i would say a detailed analysis and a lot of child related sensitivities have been taken care in the design and then uh, we have even and then this is for most of the kids in the one to i would say 3 year segment right then we again took feedback from our customers and then uh, everything got to do with uh, what to do uh, about once they start going to schools then what is what are the sort of facilities they would be needing so there we we focused on the hobby center and the tuition center right so where people can uh, probably you know take their digital online classes from there or if they have a uh, in person tuition teacher coming over so there is a tuition uh, there are almost uh, two tuition dedicated tuition rooms and close to uh six uh, you know uh, six sort of uh, places where they can uh, where they can do you know tuitions and that sort of setup and uh, and they can do their hobby and project work because again one aspect of a community life is there will be quite a few kids going to the same school from the community right so they can do their project work and all of that together so that that was another key thing what we focus so overall you can see the entire space sums up to 22000 square feet of child care amenities addressing both the 1 to 3 year age group and the 5 to probably 12 year age group so you know all those things have been taken care and uh, probably you know uh, and th that's how we designed loft right so this is some of the imagery of the crash so you can see how it's going to look like right so it's very even the colors even the i would say the the equipment and everything would be child friendly and would be you know uh, take you know the sensitivities of children would be taken care in the design this is the indoor play area right for kids this is the ho hobby and the tuition center right so it's time for a poll so let me know what you guys are uh, thinking with respect to this so i'm going to launch the poll so what feature of the urban corridor will be most useful for your children so please uh, poll and let us know what you're thinking okay so the indoor play area is 21% hobby and tuition 17% all of the above 58% great and it means we sort of uh, got the design aspect right so uh, perfect right so yeah because i think the child care was very very important for us see i i i'll add one more story here before i move on to the next one uh growing up i grew up in a neighborhood building like a five floor building right by end of the month uh, i used to see my mother used to maintain a khata of all the gas cylinders which she which she borrowed from the neighbors and the neighbors borrowed from us Gro now if you if you look at our generation right we don't do any such thing because the ga the gas is central is, is 
comes to a centralized uh, uh, centralized mechanism. So can we see the gated, gated community as a product line as solved for utilitarian needs of the customer? The next aspect, the next dimension is can, we, can it solve much beyond that, much more than utility? Can, we, can it solve for lifestyle needs of the customer? So that's how I feel the work from home and the childcare facilities can really, uh, you know, really, help, uh, really help us. Right, so that's what I think Loft is. So Loft, in Loft, I, I, I would really want, I would really want the children to have a great life there. And on top of that, most important for the parents, the convenience and the comfort of having a world-class crash at facilities, something which we wanted to offer. Right now, let me move on to chapter next chapter, chapter four, where it's all about health and fitness. Again, something very, very important, uh, uh, important aspect of our life. Right, so, so we just came up, never bored and never boring. So why we mentioned that? Because uh, uh, see, the, as, a, as a fitness enthusiast myself, the, the biggest pain point with respect to the entire health and fitness aspect is the point that, you know, uh, boredom is some of the, is, is the biggest thing. We, we go and do the same thing day in and day out, we are going to be fatigued by it. And even when we polled and spoke with people, they, they did refer to that. Boredom is boredom as being one of the biggest reason in dropping out of your uh, fitness regime. In fact, most of our uh, customers have told, uh, on an average, uh, uh, within a span of four, four and a half weeks, they drop out of their workout regime, whatever they set for themselves. So we really want to tackle the boredom problem. So it's, it's not just about giving a gym. It's not just about giving you know, some facility for the brochure perspective. It, it, that really doesn't solve for the lifestyle need of the customer, right? So, so let me give a little brief about the health and fitness uh, facilities at Loft. And uh, you know, ex let me explain about some of them. So the gym in total is around 5,000 square feet. So we wanted to do, to do something unique with the gym here. Typically, if you, if you look, most of the gyms have uh, a strength training studio and a cardio studio. And eventually, people get bored of these. And then nobody ends up using them apart from 10% you know, really enthusiastic people. So we really wanted to tackle that problem. So we came up with the idea of multiple studios within a gym, right? So the gym at uh, Loft will have a, a strength training studio, right? And uh, a cardio studio, and then a calisthenic, calisthenic studio, something very, very uh, unique and one of its kind, uh, right? Which is more sort of a body weight training and something like, you know, your kickboxing, right? So, and it's split into two levels. So you, uh, this is on the second floor, it comes with its own calisthenic studio. And then we have the yoga and the, and the Zumba class right, uh, uh, space right beside the, the calisthenic studio, right? And so we, 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 are, we, we wanted to package multiple studios in the health and fitness. That's why we don't want to call it a gym. We want to call it health and fitness infrastructure where it has multiple studios and multiple facilities so that it really tackles the, the boredom problem and at the same time it there's a sense of excitement doing each of this, and people can really you know, experiment with different forms of workouts. So on an average, they end up working out more than what they were doing before. So that was a very key aspect of uh, the entire design of the health and fitness facilities in Loft. So again, the gym is overlooked by swimming pool, so we really wanted to you know, get in that sort of, uh, I would say, a resort sort of thing, resort sort of feel where people can work out and then go into a spa and then probably, you know, uh, experience the swimming pool. Right, this is again the yoga and the Zumba uh, space. And again, another key aspect is even sports is part of the health and fitness center, right? So we focused on, again, uh, badminton is something which was something very dear to our customers and most of the people are, uh, you know, are, uh, play and use this facility. So one unique thing in uh, Loft is, if you look most of the communities uh, in financial district, close to 2,000 flats have three badminton courts. In Loft, we have 894 flats and we have three badminton courts. So that way we have a better, better ratio going for, I would say almost double to what's available in the market out there. So, so that the wait time will be less and the availability of the space would be better than you know, the other projects in the area. So this is some of the imagery of the facility. So this is how it's going to look. So this is a imagery of the gym. Right, and this is sort of a kickboxing studio. We are even exploring if we can put in a couple of uh, Pilates machines because Pilates is also something which uh, a lot of the you know, people are excited about. So we are still in the process of deciding that. And this is the calisthenic studio, the level above. 
This is the swimming pool which is overlooking the, uh, the fitness studio. The yoga and the Zumba space. This is the uh, badminton courts. There are three in number. So this is again one, uh, one interesting infographic which I wanted to share again when we polled previously with our customers. So when we ask them what are the types of workouts you prefer, so you see it's spread across the board. There's uh, nothing gets a significant majority. So this led us to the point of, okay, we need to have multiple studios within, uh, within the health and fitness center. So people can really, you know, uh, uh, explore what they like and then, you know, probably, you know, uh, get better at whatever they are interested in. And another aspect also, we are seeing that the entire, uh, the, the future of workout also is slowly moving to a lot of group classes. That's something which we are observing. Uh, hopefully by, uh, by the next uh, time when we meet, I'll be able to come up with a better update on this. Because again, with the gym facility also, what we are thinking is, uh, one is giving a very good facility. We, we really want to rope in a very good uh, service provider as well. Because the, the, the aspect of having a trainer and the aspect of, uh, you know, working out together in groups is really going to improve the entire, uh, the entire health and fitness regime of our residents. So that also we are, you know, we are sort of working out with uh, some of the fitness, uh, you know, uh, fitness service providers to come and operate the space. Hopefully we get a, a good vendor. So probably by next uh, ROTC, I'll be able to give you an update on that. Right, so some of the other add-on uh, things is uh, we have a dedicated squash, we have a squash court on, in loft. We have a, a big football turf and a box cricket turf. So these, this, these turf grounds are like what you see in some of the uh, rooftops of some of the commercial buildings, right, in Gachibauli and uh, high tech city area. So this would be similar to that. So people can play sort of a football and box cricket. So, so it, again, it, it, can, it, it can engage uh, more number of people and then it, it can be done as a more like a group sport, thereby again even fostering uh, relationships with residents and all. And then we have indoor games room. In fact, with the indoor games room, uh, Probably uh, now that we, you know, uh, we have a research platform, we'll be sending out various polls to you guys because the indoor uh, games room is something where we want more of your feedback. What, what is it that you guys will be using more? Because sometimes I do see in communities, may the billiards room or some of these spaces, carom board, room, they're not being used as much. See, there's no point in giving unused spaces because, uh, you know, it, 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 it'll, it'll just become like a dark corner. So we will send out a few polls uh, maybe eventually down the line. This is one area where we want your feedback on what do you think we should put there so it will be used much better, right? So, so that we'll be getting to you. And there are various such amenities. We have a basketball court as well for kids, right? So again, it's, it's time for a poll. So let's see, uh, you know, what is it that you guys are thinking? So I've uh, presented the poll. So please uh, uh, select your option. What's your most preferred approach to staying healthy and fit? So close to 44% have selected more sort of sports. Wonderful. And 34% walking and jogging. Uh, walking and jogging. And, okay, great. Actually, one more point I wanted to mention around walking and jogging also. Right? So uh, we have made sure that in loft, we, you know, uh, the entire walking track, we are giving EPDMS flooring. So that's, that's soft on your knees. When we spoke with, uh, because this point did come up uh, in our surveys, uh, you know, people, you know, uh, you know, people of all age groups, uh, walking is something which is, is both, uh, they use it both for fitness and as well for, you know, for the, so it's a social activity. People walk in groups, they, you know, uh, uh, they converse with their friends and other residents, right? So, so walking was something very important for us and then we, we wanted to really come up with better solution on that. So the entire walking tra track in uh, loft project has EPDMS flooring, which is very soft on your knees and which is recommended by doctors. See, walking on concrete is, is extremely, extremely damaging on your knees. So, and since walking being such a prime time activity, so we really wanted to go, uh, you know, give a much, uh, you know, we, we really wanted to solve for that problem and give a top notch solution. So the entire walking track in uh, loft has EPDMS. So it will be soft on your knees and it's recommended by the doctor. So that's one great uh, value add what we have done with respect to walking, right? So now let's move on to the last chapter of, of the design brief, what we call uh, practical luxury. Again, in, in this day and age, right, in, 
where most uh, in, in most couples, both wife and husband are working. This uh, thing which is most uh, deficit is time, right? So can can the community really help people in uh, you know save you know providing utilitarian services so that it can save them on their time, right? It, so, so we came up with the concept of practical luxury, where the challenge was, can people reach out to most of the most of the daily utilities within 100 steps? And again, mind you, this is not to get anybody lazy. We, we in no way want you to become lazy, but we wanted to save time for you guys. So probably you can finish work, uh, finish these things faster, and still complete the 10,000 uh, steps, uh, walking or jogging around the facility. But yeah, the entire concept of practical luxury came up with the thesis that can, can consumers really you know, uh, 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 solve for most of their utility needs in just 100 steps. The convenience became very, very important. And we feel convenience is one super form of luxury. Luxury lies in convenience, right? So that's the entire element of practical luxury. So in this line, we, we set up say, various facilities. Like we set up a supermarket and pharmacy on campus, on facility, and again, this too is provided on the ground floor in the urban corridor. Again, something which is very easily accessible, and people can get in, get out. Let me share a statistic also. There is almost 80% drop in footfalls if the space is removed from the ground floor to first floor itself. Right? So by keeping it on ground floor, the footfalls will be higher, which is good for the business there, and we can really rope in a better service provider, uh, service provider for this. So for supermarket services, we have, uh, we have you know, roped in Ratnadeep. They will be offering services here. So they would, be, uh, they would be operating the facility. So that's one thing. And the next important thing was a saloon and spa. Again, a day, see, all these things are daily utilities, which will really save us a lot of time if, you know, if it's really close by. And the entire saloon and spa uh, space provided on campus is operated by Bubbles, which is a very well-known uh, uh, say, uh, you know, uh, salon and spa brand uh, locally. So Bubbles would be operating the facility. And then uh, another key aspect when we were doing research is the entire concept about locker facility. I think the ATM not really because these days people are using uh, a lot of UPI, so ATM I think is any which was not used much. But the locker facility was something which people cited towards to st store their valuable items like gold or you know, several other valuable items. So in Loft, we have uh, tied up with ICICI Bank. So ICICI Bank will be having a branch at facility, and they will be having a locker facility, so exclusively for residents. So you guys can uh, use that. And another important thing was the entire concept of clinic, the medical office on facility. So the you know so we have given close to around 600 to 800 square feet of uh, medical office on facility, on site, and with uh, close to two clinic rooms, and we are uh, in talks with the various uh, uh, you know top hospital uh, chains to come and uh, to partner with them so that they can supply doctors in rotation. We have even taken feedback from customers on what sort of doctors they would need. Of course, demand also would probably be uh, driving it much better, but. Uh, we're making sure at least they send in pediatricians, cardiologists, endocrinologists, and uh, orthopedicians for now. And of course, the community can decide as per their requirement. So we felt these four are very, very essential utilities of day-to-day -day living. And it would add great value to the community if we can, you know, uh, if, 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 if they can access this within 100 steps. And another important innovation what we have done here also is that three out of the four uh, for such facilities, we have brought in the best service provider out there. Like for supermarket, we have brought in Ratnadeep. So along with Ratnadeep comes their quality and their standards of uh, operations. And uh, for, uh, for the spa and salon, we have brought in bubbles. So you can expect a certain standard of uh, services. The bank, Kelly, ATM, most of our customers uh, who are in the IT, IT services have their payroll in the, with ICSA bank. So it will be easy, much easier for them to transact. And for clinic also, we are uh, you know, talking with a few uh, hospital chains. Hopefully, by the next uh, ROTC, we will be able to come up with an announcement of whom we have roped in for that. So that, uh, so that it, you know, people know, see, gone are the days, I think, where people are just buying space. Today, just by selling space, it's not going to work. You need to sell space, and you need to add a very good service layer on top of it, because ultimately, people consume the services. So, a unique concept in Loft is we have designed for very, you know, we have designed each of the space keeping in mind the entire, you know, uh, design thesis of each of the space. 
and even partnering with uh, the best in class service providers so that we can you know the uh, top notch services delivered to the residents and uh, so this entire quotient of ease of living can be achieved because going forward i think ease of living is something which is very very important it should be way easier to live in our communities compared to our neighboring communities and we feel this is a great this will be a great competitive advantage going into future so we will be uh, we will be continuously announcing as and when we open these service providers right to to probably you know make the entire living comp quotient easier so this is some of the imagery of uh, of our designs so this is how the salon would be coming up another key aspect what we are doing from loft onwards right typically what happens is developers only give space right the bare shell they give out and uh, the corresponding uh, vendor whoever is operating they come in and do the interiors so we wanted to take a different approach uh, from loft onwards because uh, when we saw most of these vendors they do not really do uh, i would say aesthetic interiors and aesthetics are very important on the usability of the space right so and another thing uh, also is that you know by the time they come and do their thing the place is already done they really can't change certain things and improve the functionality so in loft we did a unique thing where we are providing uh, the entire interiors and all we are doing as a developer and the the vendor is only doing the operations part so the aesthetics have been taken into taken into mind because typically i wouldn't uh, bubbles wouldn't be doing investing such uh, investing uh, to create such type of spaces but we can as developers right because ultimately it's important for us because the resident we want to give that you know the super experience to our residents so that's something very unique what we are doing from uh, loft onwards so we are doing the physical space and we are doing the interiors so that we can really focus on the aesthetics as well not lose the aesthetics uh, while you know uh, while you know while the spaces are executed so this is again this is the banquet hall again we wanted again banquet hall was uh, something very very a uh, utilitarian and much needed uh, uh, amenity right so if you look uh, uh, you know in 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 the vicinity especially in financial district any decent convention center will cost uh, anywhere close to a lakh rupees so you know we really wanted to provide great experience here and probably save up on that to our consumers and uh, you know give again a top notch uh, experience there right and this is the guest bedrooms again you know uh, the entire aspect of guest is something very very important and something which our uh, customers have have told that's very dear to them they want their guests to be treated well so this is the uh, this how the guest bedrooms will be looking and i think there are approximately four in numbers right so so it's time for uh, one last poll uh, so i'll be launching the poll so the question is which of this practical luxury amenities are you most excited about so please uh, please mention your answers guys so supermarket gets the lion's share so close to 40% of the people are think that's a much needed uh, uh, space great so we are working with the best partner in the city uh, according to that ratnadeep right and then the atm and bank locker 32% oh great <laughs> uh, and then the salon and spa and pharmacy which will be part of the supermarket great perfect so then it means we have, and yeah we've got uh, so yeah as you have seen it's not just about the space we are even bringing in uh, the best in class service providers so that the delivery the service is delivered in top notch right so probably the that concludes the five key aspects which i wanted to discuss with you guys so probably before we move on to the next phase uh, you know next phase i just want to put one more poll and take in your feedback what features are you most excited about it at loft so i've launched the polls uh, please guys uh, uh poll oh great uh, majority 50% have said they like uh, all the above and 27% uh, have mentioned the room sized uh, outdoor living balconies again the outdoor living balcony has been uh, something very uh, unique and very dear to us in fact we were this, uh, we were the developers who introduced that concept to hyderabad and uh, the, we received great feedback so thank you so much for that the co-working space and the practical amenities great so so see that's what we are offering at loft so it's not just about uh, uh it's not just about the you know uh, 
the, the home or the flat. It's about the entire living aspect. See, as a developer, what, is, what do our products do? Our products are supposed to solve for the lifestyle problems, right? So, so that's, that's around which we need to develop solutions. So the concept in Loft has been, the main focus has been ease of living. So that's something which we want to uh, strive for and get better as we keep going on. So thank you so much for your feedback. So, so now that you've seen behind the scenes, see all, this, all of this uh, presentation was about what led to the design of Loft. Right, so the work from uh, the, the co-working spaces, the crashes, the lobbies, all of this. So now all of this culminates into what uh, we'll be, you know, uh, we'll be showing you now, we'll be presenting to you the 3D walkthrough. So all of this culminates into that. So that was the walkthrough. So all the inputs, all these, uh, you know, design brief is as what has led us to create ASBL Loft, right? So before I move on, also I want to, you know, uh, present, uh, you know, a small video on what's happening at, si at site. So so far we have spoken on the design lines and have, we have presented the uh, the walkthrough. Now I want to show what's happening at site, so you know what you know, what's happening there. So that too will be a small video. Let's take a live tour of the site.
So that's about uh, what's happening at site. So we are almost 95% of the excavation is done, close to 100%, I think, a little bit here, rocks here and there. But, and the concreting works have just begun. So we have, uh, the project has set sail and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we want to give much higher data of the schedule. So we'll be constantly posting the updates, uh, the live uh, progress reports, uh, you know, uh, frequently months or uh, once a month and all on the YouTube channel. So I would say, say please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll be getting these uh, updates. So before we move on to the Q&A session, just one thing uh, I wanted to present. So I wanted to present the, the loft brochure. So we were again uh, very focused on the entire experience aspect of it. We took in a lot of uh, you know, feedback from the, uh, and we have observed the entire coffee table books, right? So how they should be looking and all. So we have designed again the best in class uh, brochure. There is, I would say this is the most luxurious brochure out there. So it comes with a magnetic casing. So you can open it this way. And then it's got uh, the colors of prosperity, maroon and gold upon it. So I present to you Loft brochure. So I would, great. So guys, now let's uh, go on to the next session of the presentation, right? So this would be a live Q&A session. So you guys can uh, post in questions. So our team would be, you know, uh, uh, so the questions would be done in a Slido platform. So they would be posting in the, Sorry. Just one second, I'm getting the... Guys, this thing. Right, the Q&A session. So please drop your questions in the Slido platform. So there'll be a QR code and there'll be links of the uh, Slido platform which they'll be posting in the comments section. So click on that and uh, you know, uh, submit your uh, questions in the Slido platform. And if at all, you know, uh, somebody thinks uh, their question has already been asked, please upvote so that that will be coming up the uh, questions list and uh, I'll be able to answer that. So you can post a question or you can, you know, click uh, the upvote feature. Great, I think the questions have begun coming in. I'll, uh, I'll wait for two minutes and I'll probably start answering them. And as we go on also, people can continuously Keep posting the question. Great. I think let's start uh, answering the questions. So the first one is, uh, in a high-rise community, I have uh, concern on number of lifts and waiting time at respective floors. How does Loft solve this? So sir, regarding this, uh, if you look at the floor level, there are 10 flats and we are providing for 10 resident lifts and one service lift. And again, the aspect of wait time is something which, which we did study in the vertical transportation section of the design. And uh, so these things have been taken care of. Another aspect also what we are working towards is probably giving uh, sort of a key cards, right? Uh, the magnetic key cards which most of us use in five star hotels where you swipe the card and then press the uh, floor number you want to go. We are doing this so that we can you know, keep the resident lift only for resident use. Because when we did traffic analysis, there are three key, uh, four key, I would say, three key uh, uh, groups who will be using the elevators. One is the residents, other is the, the, uh, the support and service staff, the maids and the housekeepers, and other is the entire delivery staff, the Swiggy, Amazon, these guys. So for all the utilities, right, for all the support staff and uh, delivery staff, the, there is a exclusive uh, service elevator so they will be using that, hence not crowding up the, these lifts. And even with respect to the resident lift, there is one per each flat at a floor level. So there are 10 flats per floor and there are 10 lifts per floor. So that would greatly solve for that problem. Right, uh, next one is no pre-MI reimbursement. Uh, was still terrace completion inspector. But uh, why 30th floor in loft? I think in loft also, it's up to 30th floor, sir. I think there, there would have been some miscommunication. In loft also, the pre-MI will be till uh, terrace completion. But I think a 30th floor, one of the, the 30th floor milestone needs to be paid by the customer, if I'm not wrong. I think, uh, so that's what it is. And you can, for further details, you can get in touch with your CRM team. But the pre-MI will be paid till completion of the terrace, just like all our other projects. 
right? Next, what level of customization can I do in the apartment? Sir, so structure, no structural, uh, you know, customizations as possible because it's a shear, shear wall structure. So the walls too are load bearing entities. Having said that, you can do skin level customizations. You can probably, you know, change the flooring or, you know, uh, change some of the CP and sanitary equipment sort of thing, but no structural thing. Uh, so that's what is possible. Uh, next one. Is there any pre-launch offer? No, sir, there, there is no pre-launch offer. Uh, in Loft, we receive funding from the bank and they closely monitor our uh, you know, sales MIS, so there will, there will not be any pre-launch offer, I'm sorry. Will there be a third-party verification like done in uh, My Home, etc.? Yeah, we are working towards that. Uh, you know, we are working towards that. Hopefully, uh, once that's done, I will, uh, you know, we'll, we'll announce it out uh, in the form of a letter or something. Generally, B1 parking is reserved for uh, higher floors, but in loft, it's opposite. Why is that? So, see, everything, see, one thing with regarding to parking, I will say there are four basements. Somebody has to stay in that. There is nothing like uh, higher floor. See, higher floor apartment has a premium view, right? Uh, so that's its biggest advantage, right? So the basements have to be distributed out, so there, are, there has been a traffic analysis and all of that, and in line with that, we... Uh, sort of uh, design the basements, so so you know it's it, it sort of a it's it, it sort of see one thing at least we believe in is putting all all the information up front. Uh, so you know the, there there has been a certain standard and certain theory what we followed, and that's how the parkings and the basements were allotted. Are amenities free of cost for residents? Uh, sir, regarding amenities, I think just like any other uh, facility, I think there will be basic uh, usage charge which will be, I would say, similar to what other communities are charging out there. I'll tell you the reason also why. See, basically, uh, the developer is handing over the space, right? And uh, once the usage starts, there needs to be operation layer, right? There needs to be the uh, uh, corresponding operation staff who needs to be paid for and all of that. That's why we charge the nominal, uh, uh, nominal fees to use the spaces. So it won't be too much, but uh, it would be applicable because and that amount will be... Uh, used to pay the operation staff. If we don't do that, then you're not going to have an operation staff out there, and hence the space only becomes, uh, uh, you know, uh, unu uh, unusable, uh, you know, uh, unusable. So we don't want that, right? Next, uh, why the final payment changed from 45th floor to 30th floor slab? Please let me know tenderly how many months we will get the PMA offer. <laughs> so the 45th floor has been changed to 30th floor slab, sir, because uh, we have seen in uh, Spire and Spectra, uh, once the 40th floor milestone comes, and that's when the pre also stops, people are taking way too much time in paying that, uh, paying their dues. Right? Something which needs to be paid in 15 days, they are taking close to two months. So, which is really increasing our interest expense and all. So, that's why we moved it down to the 30th floor. And approximately how many months? I think it should be around uh, 20 to 24 months, if I'm not wrong, depending on... Uh, uh, the progress of construction, I think roughly around 20 to 24 months, plus minus a month here and there. Next, uh, whether to go for my one or non my one. Oh, sorry, the question is replaced. Uh, there are few luxury items included in the project. Uh, this, how is the maintenance guaranteed by ASBL from a longer run? So, so with respect to maintenance, uh, we are also exploring multiple models, right? So, uh, we have Spire handover this year in another couple of months. So there we have uh, partnered with CBRE. So CBRE would be doing the entire facility maintenance, and CBRE has been doing maintenance all around uh, for most good, uh, most projects in Hyderabad. So they will come with that experience. So hopefully, uh, by the time loft handover comes, that particular relationship would be much better developed, and the teething issues will be solved. So you know, I I, I believe we will be able to offer a far better experience. So, so today I cannot, I, I cannot really say whether it would, which agency say we will be doing the, whether we will be doing or whether a third party agency will be doing the entire maintenance part. But uh, as we go towards the end, I'll be, we'll be, you know, uh, sharing our thoughts on this and our actions on that. What will be the expected base price during handover time? So see, with respect to the price side, right, so this is a speculative thing. Uh, uh, what I believe I'll, I'll say, again, this is purely my opinion and uh, things can change. See, my idea is uh, we, are, we have designed loft by keeping in the entire needs of the customers, right? So definitely a product like this will have uh, you know, great demand even in the future. So that's what we believe in. 
But having said that, yes, a uh, lot of our projects like Spectra and all have seen great appreciation. So there is great demand in the financial district area. So we expect you know, the demand to go forward. That's what I would say. Why Loft CRM is asking to take loans from Bajaj Finance only? Okay, good question. So sir, with respect to this question, right? see, the entire pre-EMI offer is a cost which the developer is uh, burning, right? So when we partner with various banks, with Bajaj, we, they have given, so this is not an offer which only the developer is giving. I just want everybody to be on board. This is not an offer which developer exclusively is giving. We are, this offer of pre-EMI, we along with Bajaj, together have uh, stitched together this uh, financial package, right? So that's why Baja, this offer is only applicable with uh, Bajaj Housing Finance. So, you know, there will be, you know, there will be a, some sort of cost uh, benefits for us. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a financial package which the builder and banker has together come out with. It's not the builder alone, so, right? So that's why it's only Bajaj. Is there a temple plant as people request in last authorities as well? Yes, sir, there's a temple plant. Uh, we will land, uh, we, uh, the temple is planned and we will be uh, associating with uh, J, uh, J. Swami Trust. So they would be operating and uh, doing the entire Seva Karikram of the God. So it will be, the entire calendar would be designed by them and their uh, uh, pujaris would be operating it. Yes, a temple is planned. Whether to go for my one or non my one, I uh, have heard about CPH issues and then. See, first thing, sir, any high rise structure, it's not possible to build in non my one. Point number one. So in non my one, that is a typical cast in suit, the brick wall, you know, the uh, typical column beam and brick wall structure. In that we can do up, approximately around 15 to 20 floors. Anything above that is not possible in that. One, from a time perspective, it takes way too long. Second thing, even from a manpower safety perspective, because in a typical uh, uh, cast in suit to methodology of construction, there needs to be external plastering and people can't external plaster the building at such heights. So, and even in the city you would have seen, there are no buildings above 20 floors which, where they have done such methodology. So, my one is the only way. Now, coming to the issue of C pages and all, there are multi, uh, multiple ways where we address that by, you know, uh, uh, waterproofing and right after concreting, we do jet spray of water to see where water is leaking and we open up that uh, part and again we fix it. So, that we proactively do it so that even the minute test of uh, C page issues are also resolved. So that would probably guarantee around 90% there will not be any seepage issues, right? Well, when can we expect a model flat and loft? <laughs> uh, sir, so <laughs> uh, we are working out, see it's very difficult to source uh, land in that area, uh, you know. Uh, so we are working out on that. So hopefully we should, uh, we should come up with some announcement uh, uh, soon. The amenities range is interesting. How did you arrive at these concepts as a developer? Uh, so basically, sir, uh, with respect to the, uh, these questions, you know, with respect to this, see, we treat ourselves like more like a hardware company, right? Uh, hardware designers. So we are, so we are just designing uh, built-up space, right? So we are, so just like any uh, software product or any hardware company or like, you know, probably the la the manufacturers of laptops or chipsets, there's a good requirement list which people gather and then they move into development. So we wanted to bring in that practice from Loft. So Loft is the first project where we, where we first did a thorough you know, uh, research amongst our customers, focus group studies, uh, dipstick surveys and all. And uh, then we you know, uh, came up with, the, this is, these are the requirements. And then we passed it on to the architects and save, uh, various other consultants that this is what people want. So let's design in accordance with that. So that's how we are able to come up with uh, unique uh, amenities in loft or probably I would say one of uh, one of a kind and probably we want to do it more and more going forward. So we want to uh, take the practice of how most of the tech industry works where you, you consolidate, you gather requirements, you consolidate and then design, not blindly designing. That will not solve for problems, right? So for how many months will we get the no pre MA offer? Can you give an, uh, I've answered this question, sir. Approximately 20 to 24 months is what the pre MA offer one can expect, plus minus one month here and there, right? Why is the brochure ceiling uh, height is mentioned 10.5 feet, but the uh, sales team says it's around nine feet standard height. Is there any issue uh, to have with? Oh, I think uh, then the sales team is communicating wrong. I'll ask them to uh, get it correct. It's not nine feet standard height. It's 10 feet, four and a half inches. I think even the brochure, then the way that four and a half, they would have taken it as five. No, it's 10 feet, four to four and a half inches. So 3.15 meter. 
Typical heights of uh, most of the buildings uh, are three meters. This is 3.15 meter. So 0.15 meter, it has more. So that's around four to four and a half inches. So that would be the gross height. And the net height would be depending uh, 150 mm, I think the slab thickness and the flooring thickness would be removed. And uh, the, so Mota Moti, you will be getting an additional close to four inch of more space than any of the other projects, uh, you know, which, which any of the other projects, to put it in perspective. Right? What would be the UDS? Probably I think the CRM will be better able to get back, so I think it's uh, close to, I don't know, probably the CRM would be able to address the right thing. Uh, I don't want to say the wrong number. Next one is, is there a lawn tennis ground? Can you please detail? Uh, so the, uh, the list of uh, amenities I think are mentioned on the website and the brochure. And yeah, there is no lawn tennis. Uh, the reason also is that, uh, see tennis as a facility occupies uh, a lot of space and engages too few people, right? In, in the high-rise living, we have, to, we have to carefully and craftily design space. We have to negotiate for something which is used more and engages more people, corresponding to something which, you, which engages less number of people. So tennis is not there, right? Uh, next. Do you have any villa project in the future? No, sir, not as of now. Uh, we are a very asset-focused company, so we intend to uh, primarily work in the, you know, the uh, high-rise apartment space. But I think as, as in future, in case we go there, probably we'll, we'll, we'll get in touch with you. What if project handover delay and how can you assure customer on this? I could see 29 handover date in RERA website. Sir, so in the RERA website, uh, we put it as a practice to, you know, take the outermost bound of six years. I think uh, most of the approvals are given, have a time lapse of six years. So we put in that. Though the idea is not to do such delay because uh, we'll be paying a lot of uh, uh, pre in that case. And also in the agreement, I think uh, there is a clause on, uh, you know, the, the delay, the penal charges on the delay clause uh, due to delay as well. So we'll be abiding by that. Uh, in the RERA men website, not only for this project, all projects and most projects in the city also, we mention the entire, uh, you know, the entire life cycle, whatever time for which the approval is, Held, uh, held active, that timeline we mentioned there, just so that you know, uh, uh, if suddenly if something work stops and uh, you know, because of some, again, maybe pandemic or something like that, and then the timelines increase, again, we, we, should, not, we should not be going back to RERA and again change that. That just leads into a lot of legal chaos. So we do this because we don't, to avoid that, those sort of situations. But most of our projects are, in fact, all of our projects are on time. So you have, uh, I would like to cite the case of Spire where we started in 20, uh, 20 November, right? Uh, we started excavating and uh, this November we are giving handovers. So we are even, you know, it's, it's very close there. So we, we, we take pride in giving projects on time. Is this a company related with Ashoka Builders? And concern? Yes, sir, this is a company related with Ashoka Builders. My father has been one of the uh, uh, founding member of Ashoka Builders. And then after working with them for uh, first three years of my career, I came out and along with my partner Anil, uh, we started this uh, company ASBL, and then my sister also has joined. So it's a uh, that that's its linkage. So my father belongs to Ashoka Builders, and then ASBL is uh, is is I would say next generation with new set of uh, partners. Are the flats as per Vastu especially east facing? Also, housing loan should be available through more banks, including SBR, PSB. So flats are hundred uh, percent as per Vastu, right? Uh, all flats, yeah, east and uh, west facing. Uh, so that's the Vastu thing. Regarding SBI and uh, public sector bank, sure, sir, we'll, uh, we'll uh, get the approval with them. But mind you, when you are going through the SBI or any PSB, public sector bank, or any other bank, you, you will not be getting the pre -MA offer. The pre -MA offer is only exclusively a financial uh, package in partnership with Bajaj and ESBL. So they will be bearing some cost part of it. So that's why it's a together thing. So yeah, we'll get the right approval from SBI and all, but you will not be able to avail the pre ma offer. What are the fire safety norms that you guys are following since it's a high risk? Sir, I think the fire safety norm, I'll ask the team to probably, uh, Mr. Nihar, right? Yeah, I'll, pro I'll, I'll ask the team to probably, you know, uh, send the entire fire DBR, the design brief report uh, to you. So that will have a list of all the, uh, the technical aspects of the entire design with regarding to the fire safety. And uh, before handover, we will be, so we already got the uh, 
fire approval before and over we will be getting the the uh, noc or sorry the oc occupancy certificate from the fire department only after that will we be able to hand over so so they'll check for whether we complied with what has been approved by the department and i'll ask the team to uh, share it or probably the crm team you can get in touch sir they'll share the report with you the fire dbr will asb asbl be maintaining the community after handover uh, sir so essentially for the first two years so we will be maintaining or uh, after that uh, uh, we, we are still in the process of you know seeing in various communities what's the what's the best format uh, should should we give it off to the rwa or should we maintain but for the first two years we'll be maintaining we'll be maintaining it through a third party like cbre or any of those agencies or we might be doing it so by the time the handover we are close to the handover i will be will be coming up with the more uh, exact detail of that because we are also test trial doing test trials of var various uh, formats in different sites like in our first project lakeside we maintained for two years and then we have given it to the community in the process of giving it to the community in uh, asbl spire we are we are maintaining it for the first two years through a uh, through an agency cbre so as more you know we are we are testing what is the best what is the best fit so by the time loft we would have done uh, close to 2000 handovers so we'll be a, you know much better equipped to handle the thing is the co-working space free of cost for residents or what would be the cost sir regarding the policy of uh, the usage of the space i think we are yet to finalize that but if i am not wrong uh, i would say mota moti for using of the co-working workspaces i don't think uh, we intend to keep any cost the, but for the meeting rooms it's a chargeable basis just so that it earns revenue to pay for the maintenance and the operations staff uh, who are working in that space so that's how we intend to do but again uh, this policy i'll be better able to uh, come up with as we are uh, moving closer to the handover so we'll be drafting these policies is hyderabad uh, one of the best cities to invest in india i don't want to enter the market at a wrong time due to fomo <laughs> Uh, sir, so with respect to Hyderabad, let me say a couple of things. One is, see, we have a very stable uh, political ecosystem, so that's one very essential for growth. Next, we have one of the best, uh, you know, uh, traffic conditions uh, in in any major city, right? Uh, so that's again something very conducive for growth. And then, second thing is, uh, the, the third thing is, I think the entire the social infra space is also slowly opening up. We are seeing a lot more uh, F&B stores coming up. Uh, a lot more uh, malls are in the pipeline so definitely i think i am somebody who's bullish on hyderabad uh, you know uh, our entire business bet is on hyderabad so yes definitely i think hyderabad has a great future going forward and there's a lot of migration also happening from central india and different places into hyderabad so yeah i'm really hopeful for that i've heard you talk about design philosophy how do you think you have evolved in terms of design across all your projects sir so yeah as i have mentioned right so with initially from from the past to now now we are moving to a research led design or consumer led design typically in the developer segment the way is there is a standard template and then you know the architect comes with the standard template just changing few colors here and there and then they are built so i think such a practice is uh, is now probably gone so we are moving into research led design where before designing the project we are conducting surveys taking in feedback from various people and trying to solve uh, for what they are asking for so that's i think the new difference from loft and particularly in loft as i have mentioned the five key concepts the arrival experience the co-working spaces the child care facilities the practical luxury and the health and fitness so that's that those are the key differentiators but at various levels we have been doing uh, such surveys and all now that you are you know you you you, you all have also joined the asbl family so we'll be you also will be uh, you know uh, receiving the receiving the polls and all so please fill out and help us as per bath to bathroom cannot be in front of uh, main door it is brahmastanam auspicious i don't like should be kept why so so i'll probably look at it in detail and get back to you on this uh, query sir how much would be the maintenance price uh, every month after and over i think the maintenance for the first two years we are collecting is uh, 108 rupees uh, so that's close to if i'm not wrong uh, for uh, 4.25 rupees per month that's what it is and post that i think it will depend serious, seriously it will depend on the rwa and the the market conditions on such a day but i think that's a decent amount it should probably suffice is what my understanding is unless something changes dramatically 
ASBL sounds to be a great company when you are talking it to market so that we can invest. ASBL sounds to be great. Okay, thank you. I, I didn't get that question. Uh, how are you taking care of water and treated water in the next 10 to 15 years? Often there are issues with water treatment plant and fresh water is reducing. Sir, so, so there is a dedicated WTP provided on facility, right? So that will be, uh, so there will be a ground test uh, of water done and basis of which all the raisins, the treatment plant would be functioning. And second oversee, most of the projects in this area, right, uh, there is a government ka water pipeline which is uh, coming up in that area. So by the time the handover is done, hopefully that work would be done. And as on our part, we will be finishing with all the piping work which is required to connect to that. Uh, uh, connect to that. So most of the water would be piped water, so there's a constant supply. And uh, regarding the pipe water also, the government has usually inv invested in, I think, the Krishna phase three and various of these projects, so the supply of water is really good to the city. So, you know, uh, that's how we intend to solve for it. Crash and other facilities will be chargeable, and how will we book them? Uh, Ma'am, yes, crash would be chargeable because the service provider uh, would be charging uh, because they need to pay for their staff and all. Uh, to, for booking, ma'am, by that time, I think we'll come up with the app. Uh, in fact, our, uh, our uh, resident app is, uh, you know, is being deployed in Aspire, right? So we will be, uh, you know, by that, uh, so using that app, you will be able to, you know, book the facility, interact with uh, various uh, service providers on, fest, uh, on campus. So all of, all of that uh, we will build in through the app. We will make it so, that, you know, we, we are very fo uh, focused on the ease of living and, you know, probably managing your entire, you know, living ecosystem with that app. So using that, you will be able to do it. Is the EV charging points are provided for each parking lots or it is only a few communities, five to 10 common EV charging points? Sir, uh, Mr. Chakravarti, right? Sir, so with respect to the EV charging point, uh, uh, currently, I think what we are saying is uh, there will be only few few spots uh, where people can go and charge, but we are exploring. See, the one problem what I've seen from that, because initially we, our idea was to give to each and every apartment, right, irrespective. But the problem with that, what's happening is, uh, so because of that, there's a bigger transformer, and the bigger transformer ends up eating more electricity. So even if you, let's say you have an electric car, right, and uh, you're using the... Fare, uh, you're using the, you know, the, the charging infrastructure, then there is no problem. But in case you don't have an electric car, then irrespective of whether you use or not, because of a bigger transformer, people have to end up paying 400 rupees, uh, around 400 rupees to 500 rupees of uh, money for electrical billing, for the electrical usage. So that's why we have probably taken a step back and we are contemplating on, should we give it to every car park or should we give to few car parks out there. Maybe on this we can have a poll or maybe, you know, uh, and probably take in what your concerns are. Because me personally, I'm, I'm more uh, towards the, uh, you know, the clean energy. So I would want the convenience of uh, having, uh, you know, every car, every apartment having its own electrical car charging point. But I just want to take in your opinion as well, because for those who do not have the electrical uh, car, they will still have to pay a higher bill because the transformer is going to eat a lot more electricity, right? So probably we'll, uh, you guys can give your, uh, send in your opinions through mail or something and uh, we can probably address that and then we'll fix that thing. What level of shock can this high rises bear based on? Sir, I think most of, if I'm not wrong, most of these uh, buildings are designed for level two, right? Uh, uh, sorry, zone two. So there is a big guideline in the NBC National Building Codes regarding how the zone two buildings should be designed and all of that. So all of those things have been taken in uh, uh, cognizance and uh, the approving authority, the government also uh, has approved those designs. And there's a third party agency which the government sends to, like uh, some of the top professors in the leading universities to approve the designs. So all of those things are taken care, sir. The building elevation is in such a way that it blocks the balcony view sidewards. Few floors, can you explain? Sir, basically, <laughs> Uh, that we have done mainly for the facade elevation, sir, because if we probably do not have that, then it will just be a monotonous uh, elevation uh, from, you know, Nietzsche se upar, just balcony, balcony. So that's more sort of a facade play, so it has a more attractive elevation from outside. Can I get clarification up to, about the approach road? Yeah, I think I've read this. So, so regarding the approach road, so it's a 100 feet road. It's gift deeded to the government. Some people have mentioned that in the RERA or somewhere it's mentioned as public road. 
I think it would have been an error. Uh, it's, a, it's a full uh, public road. The land is also gift deeded to the government. So probably closer to the handover, the uh, you know, government would be laying the entire BT road. If not, then we can also pitch in and you know, do that. But probably it's better to do it closer to the handover because now uh, we'll be building it so there'll be heavy trucks going on unless they get spoiled. But it's for sure a, a public road. The gift deed of the land is also done to the government. The government is the owner of the land. Would like to have a space for each project for connecting with CEO directly for some suggestions and collaborating between those who booked. So for collaboration with uh, all the residents, I think maybe we are a uh, couple of quarters away from an app. So using that app, I think the entire network, uh, entire community can network and uh, connect. And regarding with the CEO, sure, sir, I think I'll work out maybe a, a sort of an email ID where you can, you can all send in your suggestions and, uh, and probably I can read it from there, right? ASBL is truly inspiring, which completely can, uh, centric for customers. Lessons to be learned. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. I mean, it's you guys who are making us better. So it's you design. That's what we call it. Customer-led design will really make us more competent for the future. Thank you so much. Any premium fittings when compared to Spire and Spectra as starting price for Loftus on the higher side? Yes, sir. We are working out on premium uh, fittings. Probably, I think, uh, once we close the purchase order with those corresponding vendors, we'll be uh, putting it out to you guys. Because, yeah, again, this thing is something very important for us. And for me personally, is the transparency component where when I spoke with uh, uh, customers in the past, they were like, uh, can you mention a lot more of these brands instead of saying equivalents? Uh, we are working on that problem. See, I'll, why I'll say it's not an easy problem to be solved? Because what happens is unless we close the purchase order, we cannot go and put the brands. Because in case we put the brand and let's say that particular purchase order is not closed, the vendor can take us for a ride, right? So, so you know, Picking up from uh, Spire, Spectra, we are closing most of the major purchase orders much ahead in the journey so that we can communicate the cu to the customers that, boss, this is what we are giving. So in the, in the loft also, we are in that process. So once they are probably closed, we will be sharing it with you. Are there any warranties or guarantees provided for the construction quality of the apartments? Sir, as per RERA, for five years, I think the developer will be providing warranty. Right? So, so the, the rule is there. So yes, we will be abiding by that. Top Vastu people in India told bathroom in front of main room is very bad. Why did you do so? Yeah. Sure, sir, I'll take a look and probably get back. I think definitely there would have been some functional constraint. If not, uh, we, we wouldn't be doing it. Is there any construction nearby loft that can block view? So, so regarding the construction nearby, as of now, there is nothing planned, right? Uh, but having said that, see, these are prime lands uh, which are held by uh, different, uh, different landowners. So definitely, you know, uh, uh, something they might be coming up with, uh, they might be collaborating with various developers in the future. That we can't promise, but as of now, nothing is planned. That much I can say. Is there a pet area? Yes, sir, there's sort of a pet park uh, where essentially I would say you can use it for uh, uh, pet relief, uh, for pets to, you know, relieve themselves. That space can be used. Uh, uh, you know, so yeah, because uh, again, we have seen the entire the pet infrastructure is also something which is very important, and uh, especially around the pe uh, the uh, you know the pet relieving is a major thing. So there is a dedicated uh, pe uh, uh, pet park where you can take the pets to uh, relieve themselves, and then I think as per the community policy, which we we can be probably closer to handover, which will be discussed or probably you know be finalized that we can come up with a better pet policy where how to, you know, probably the pet engagement can be done. I would like to meet, uh, when Spectra is launched, it's 5K. Now Loft is starting with 8K. Why is this different? Feel its price a little high. Sir, so with respect to, <laughs> with respect to Spectra and Loft, sir, so one, when we purchase land at Spectra, uh, to purchase, when we purchase land at Loft, the, we purchased at uh, 2.3 times more than when we purchased at Spectra time in 2018. So this was purchased in 2022, uh, 2023. So the land prices have gone up. Second, the cost of construction has gone up. And second, even the look and uh, finish of the project has gone up, right? Uh, uh, the, the entire lobbies and all, they, they, they really cost a lot. So that way we, you know, we are justifying in terms of price. So there's an overall rise in input cost. It's uh, not, uh, Exclusively only for us. There's overall 
rise in input cost, and yes, we are planning state-of-the-art amenities, and these things do cost. So that's how the pricing is achieved. I've heard you talk a lot about technology and data science in construction. Can you explain that exact technology? Uh, so, so we are using the digital twin technology, so where we create a virtual twin of the project, right? We have a virtual operational twin. So, and uh, using the mobile app, the engineers at site constantly feed data, and the virtual twin gets a total understanding of what's happening real time and basis of which it gives us intelligent feedback on what needs to be done, when, what are the corrective actions, what is the best path, dynamic critical path, and that sort of stuff. So we call it the virtual twin technology, the digital twin, sorry. Since it's iRise and prestigious, uh, okay, where are we? Ah, will the road, uh, will, will the road be linked to ORR service road? I don't think the road will be linked to ORR service road, sir. Uh, the road is a dead end, it becomes a cul-de-sac, and in a way it's good because the traffic also will be less on the street and it'll have that sense of uh, calmness and quietness compared to the roads nearby. So I don't think uh, the road connects to the ORR. Solar power, sir, uh, as per the government norms, we are providing the solar panels on rooftops, and the electricity from this would be channeled to the common area lighting. Of course, it will not be total sufficient for the entire thing, but whatever electricity is generated from the uh, solar panels, that will be directed to the common area lighting. And we are complying with the norm. So we will be providing those on, to, on the rooftop. Great presentation and the detailing. Would appreciate your insights on the high density with loft project. Sir, so with respect to density, right, let me address this uh, question. Right, see, only density makes it possible to, you know, build in best of the, to bring in best of the vendors. See, let me give an example. Like in Spire, we have 400 flats, right? In 400 flats, we, and we are providing a supermarket there, but we are unable to get uh, somebody like Ratnadeep there. So see, definitely there are more, there, there, there will be new challenges with uh, uh, high density, but there are even great conveniences which are achieved with that. See, a, a lot of vendors like ICICI Bank, or Ratnadeep, or a very good crash provider, or you know somebody like uh, bubbles and all they only come when there are minimum of 1000 flats loft is 900 so it's we could convince them to come in smaller communities you're not going to have these service providers thereby the ease of living will be uh, i would say less there versus here and yes another thing see typically developers give around 2% uh, amenity space in loft if you see we are giving uh, uh, close to 3.3% of clubhouse space and another uh, 34,000 square feet. See, the clubhouse is 55,000 square feet, which is close to, if I'm not wrong, 3.3% uh, 3 of uh, the saleable space and another 34,000 square feet of additional space. See, we need to, see, high density gives its own challenges. We need to plan well. But high density is the future of living because it will reduce the cost of services. If there's low density, then you cannot have uh, very great vendors out there. And ultimately, the uh, residents, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, residents' quality of living will come down. So I am a proponent believer that high density living is the future. But one needs to carefully plan. Like in our case, we conducted the research. Yes, now with increase in density, uh, what are the new age uh, requirements? Are? So we are, we are, if you look at law, we are providing for everything. And uh, let's say something like the badminton court, which a lot of people use, right? Typically, if you look in that neighborhood, apartments which have 2,000, uh, communities which have 2,000 apartments have given three, what do you say, uh, three badminton courts. But in loft, we have 900, we have, we, we have still given three. So we need to plan better, but high density is, is the future of living. Right? Uh, since it is high rise and prestigious project, who all are frontline technical team and quality team? Sir, sir, the people who are working in this are, are engineers who have been with us for the last uh, close to eight to 10 years, and they've already executed projects, delivered, so they've got that experience. The project manager has a minimum of 15 years experience, right, and all the team also have, uh, have around seven to eight years experience, all the in-charges and then different layers of people are there. So, you know, uh, you can be rest assured that we are deploying our, you know, uh, top-notch manpower on this. And also, another thing I would want to point out, we are the, we, uh, we are, we, the number of quality P engineers we deploy per SFT, we are the highest in the industry. And we are almost beating our competitors by two times. So we are deploying twice more uh, quality inspectors compared to our competitors. So we are leaving no stone unto unturned when it comes to progress and quality. In fact, ASBL's bedrock, that is. Since it is higher, okay, I think this I've answered. 
I want to buy a flat, which is better. <laughs> uh, so, so I would say both are very good. Uh, so you buy in either one, we'll be very happy. <laughs> so uh, see, yeah, if you're looking for a little earlier and over, something like in 2025 December, then you can go for Spectra. Uh, if you're looking for a little later and over, it, you can go for loft. So it, it sort of depends on you which one uh, you would like to go, right? So I think we are done with the questions. So thank you so much. I mean, it was really, uh, uh, I was a really pleasure hosting you all here, and uh, I hope we do more of these things. And we want to actively engage with our uh, buyers, our residents, to you know, and uh, to discuss on their needs, their design, uh, uh, you know, requirements and all. So. Thank you so much for being here. Namaste.